Howdy folks, as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about GeoLayers, be sure to check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass, which is linked down in the video description. All right, so in this particular project, I've got a long zoom in into the city of Cape Town. It's looking pretty flat, so I want to add some texture. Now, one way you can do this is to go over here and create a new map comp. So click on this little hamburger menu and then click on create new map comp and just rename this texture map comp. And I want to make sure that it's linked to my main world map comp so that when I apply this texture, it's going to follow along with all the animations. So I'll click on next. Now for the imagery profile, I'm gonna select this one right down here, which is called seamless texture. You can see, if you look really closely, you can see it's got this little grid thing. And as I hover my cursor over, it shows me the name here, which is seamless texture. And as I click on it, it gives me a preview of this grid. Well, it's like freaking out and not giving me the preview. But if you click on it again, it's gonna show you two main parameters here. So we have texture size and we have a link to the texture. Now I actually already have this crumpled paper, old paper texture here on my local drive. So I'm gonna grab this little menu here and select this old paper texture. And now you'll see what it does is it creates a tile set based off of this texture image. And I can actually control the size in pixels here. So right now it's set to 256. Now just from personal experience, I've seen and I've encountered a lot of bugs if I keep the texture size small. And I think that's due to the fact that uh, GeoLayers and After Effects is having to add a ton of little tiles here and render those out one by one because my particular comp is Ultra HD resolution. So I suggest just trying to make this as large as you can. So, and actually you can go as large as 2048 pixels. So you might not wanna go that large, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it click apply, and then create this new map comp. So what this is gonna do now, it's gonna create a new map comp that's on top of our world map comp, and I'll be able to blend it in, and then finalize it, and then render it out. So here we go. Now we've got this texture right here, and actually it's looking a little bit like it's not finalized. So to finalize this, I'm gonna hold control and click on the finalize key, and that's gonna finalize both comps here. Now the main downside to this particular technique is the fact that finalizing can take a long time. But once again, if you keep your texture size a little bit higher, it's gonna be a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. Now it's finalized and I kind of have a look at what it's gonna look like in the final render. So for the texture map comp, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna switch the blend mode to something like soft light just so we get some kind of look right away. I really don't know what's going on over here with this map comp, it's like flipping out. And this is looking good enough for me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finalize the entire sequence and then I'll render this out. Okay, so you can see that GeoLayers has properly tiled this and it's refreshing this texture so that when we zoom in here, we're not getting like a scaled up pixelated mess of our texture. It's keeping the texture fresh. However, I do indeed see a gigantic seam. So what the heck? I thought this was called a seamless texture. What's going on here? Well. GeoLayers isn't gonna do all the work for us. We gotta feed it a texture that is actually seamless. GeoLayers is going ahead and tiling this and refreshing and doing all the heavy lifting. All I need to do is feed it a proper seamless texture. And to create a seamless texture, it's a pretty easy step inside of Adobe Photoshop. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab my paper texture and I'm just gonna open this up in Adobe Photoshop Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is like duplicate this little layer down here. So I'm gonna hold Control or Command and hit J with this, and that will duplicate this. And I'm gonna turn off the visibility of our background. And then I'm gonna save this out as a Photoshop file. So save as, and we're gonna do Photoshop. Old paper is perfectly fine. We don't wanna save over our original JPEG here. So with our new layer selected, to make this a seamless texture, all you have to do is go to the filter menu, select other, and then select offset. And then right here, this allows you to offset this image horizontally and vertically. And there's a little parameter down here called wrap around. We have to make sure that this wraps around. And what that does is that will make it seamless when we export it out as an image. So we can set the offset to whatever we want here. Maybe make this more in the center here, and when I click OK, so now we have this image, but there's a new problem. Now we have seams inside of our image here. So what we can do with these seams is simply 
Photoshop these out. That's why we're using Photoshop, right? So I like to personally use the patch tool, which is right here. And with this layer selected, you can just select an area and then click and drag and it will like copy over that. So I like to use the patch tool over a couple of different areas and hit Control or Command D to deselect. And one really important note is that you don't want to Photoshop the edge because the edges are what's going to be seamlessly connecting there. So if you Photoshop those edges, you're kind of um, making it irrelevant. It won't be a seamless texture. So just make sure you do not do that. And as you'd use the patch tool, you may get some uh, results that are not very great. So simply use the patch tool again over those areas that did not give you very good results. So I'm just selecting, clicking and dragging and dropping and then hitting Control or Command D to deselect and that's gonna get rid of these. Again, don't grab the edge, I'm gonna deselect that. Don't grab the edge because then we lose our seamless texture. This might not work that well because we have a big fold right here that we're gonna lose. Yeah, sometimes these folds are a little difficult so just go around them. You can spend as much or as little time as you want on this part. Okay, now that I have these seams taken care of, I'm gonna to go to File, Export, and save this out as another JPEG. And we'll call this one, you guessed it, Seamless. Now we go back to Adobe After Effects and just take note here of our big seam right here. So we have our seam. Let's see what happens when we go back into the map comp settings, go to the texture map comp and click on the little hamburger menu and then click on the edit imagery menu and then simply select our new texture, which is seamless. Click on this, apply, apply. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finalize this. Okay, so there you have it. We now have a seamless texture that automatically refreshes as I zoom in. I can zoom in as far as I want and I'm always gonna have a very pixel crisp texture image here. Now, if the refreshing really bothers you and you do not like the look of it, I have another tutorial, another method that I talk about explaining how to add textures instead of geo layers. I will link to that down in the video description. I think it's just called method one. It's where you take a texture image, pin it to your map, and then use the motion tile or the reptile effect, and then you have a static texture that you can use. and. It's a little render intensive and there are some cons associated with that technique. So go check it out and uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section. And once again, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about GeoLayers 3 or animating maps, check out my GeoLayers 3 masterclass. I also have a Patreon page where you can get the project files and just see more cool exclusive tutorials about animating maps and just uh, have a lot of fun. Okay, see you in the next one.